morning, everyone. My name is Julius Galdian from the Philippines, and I work for the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology in the Philippines. I'm also the officer in charge of the, one of the seismic stations in the Philippines. I finished my uh, uh, Master's of Science in Disaster Management in uh, uh, Tokyo, Japan in 2013. So, uh, so I'm going to present to you uh, the tsunami hazard assessments along the coast of the uh, Lingen Gulf, Pangasinan, Philippines. This is my um, master's thesis. So, is this one? So this is the order of my presentation. I'm going to talk a brief introduction and background of the study, the purpose of the study, the theories and methods used, the bathymetry and the fault group data that I used also. And uh, I'm going to give the scenario earthquakes that I've used in the, in the paper and the computational settings and the results and the conclusions. So for the introduction and background, so Philippines is located in this, uh, in this area and it is being sandwiched by several uh, tectonic plates uh, located in this region, uh, one of which is the Philippine Sea Plate that moves to toward the Philippines in the northwest direction, and the Pacific Plate is the, uh, uh, moving also uh, in the same direction towards the Philippines. So then we have the Eurasian Plate here that, towards, uh, that moves towards the Philippines in the northeast direction, and we have the Australian, big Australian Plate here that moves towards the Philippines then in the north direction. Because of these uh, tectonic pl plate interactions, the Philippines has developed uh, act, uh, many active poles and trenches in the Philippines that triggers earthquake. So uh, we have the Manila Trench here on this part, and we have Negros here in this region. We also have Sul Trench also uh, uh, on, in the south of the Philippines, and we have the Cotabato Trench. We have the Philippine Trench right here in the East Luzon Trough on this uh, part of the Philippines. And aside from these trenches, we have also uh, many active uh, faults represented by the uh, blue lines. And the most famous of which is the Philippine fault zone that uh, dissects the Philippines that runs for about 1,200 kilometers. Then uh, for the past 400 years, the uh, Philippines has uh, ha, uh, have experienced a lot of earthquakes. Those uh, dots in different colors are the epicenters of the earthquakes that have happened in, in the past 400 years. And uh, with that uh, span of time, Philippines has experienced 40 tsunamis with uh, earthquake magnitude ranges from 6.0 to 8.3 with casualties around uh, more than 4,000. 4, then this is my study area called the Lingian Gulf uh, in the Pangasinan province in the Philippines, which is located in the northwest portion of the Philippines. So this area al already experienced a, uh, a tsunami, uh, one of which uh, is the magnitude 7.6 earthquake that happened in 1934. So these are the historical uh, events that uh, affected in the area, such as the May 6, uh, 1934, and the other one is the May 16, no, 1924. Then uh, this is the in the in this study area there is an existing uh, real-time tsunami warning system which is composed of detection station and alerting system. So the detection station is composed of wet, dry, and ultrasonic tight gauge sensors, while the alerting system is composed of tri-directional loud siren uh, with range of 300 to 400 meters. So. Uh, the link, uh, when, uh, whenever this Lingian Gulf uh, tsunami detector detects a tsunami, the alerting system will be, of course, alerted right away, and this signals the community in the coastal area to evacuate. So for the purpose of this study, 
uh, the purpose of uh, for the purpose of study, uh, it complements the purpose of the uh, real, near real time tsunami detection in the area because it predicts the tsunami travel time and its maximum height at forecast points, and to calculate the subsequent uh, inundation height and submerged area at the target location, and to discuss the effectiveness of tsunami sensors for the real time tsunami forecasting. So for the theories and methods, we employ the equations and Cartesian coordinates uh, in, with the considering the shallow water wave equation with this equation. Uh, and for the equations of motion, so we, we, we use, I use these uh, uh, equi uh, terms and equations with, uh, with this uh, constant uh, consideration. And for the equations on spherical coordinate system for the continuity and momentum equation, I employ these uh, terms uh, using all the consta constants here. Then uh, for the theoretical concept, for the full plane model I used, uh, I considered the depth of the tsunami, uh, or the depth of the tsunami, which has a reference in this, air, in this uh, point. And we have the length of the uh, default, the width, the slip uh, length here the strike angle, the deep, uh, the deep angle here, here, and the slip angle. Then for the effect, uh, I also consider the vertical and uh, horizontal components of the tsunami. Uh, so the vertical uh, displacement due to the historical movement of, due to the horizontal movement of the slope UH is expressed in this term, where H is the water depth, U UX and UY are the horizontal circular displacement due to faulting. So the vertical uh, value of the H becomes smaller as it reaches the shore. The smaller the delta X is acceptable to satisfy the Courier uh, uh, Friedrich's law condition to keep the delta T at constant value. Then to the total vertical water displacement is expressed in this term. So we UH plus UZ, or in UZ is the vertical seafloor displacement due to faulting. Then uh, for the numerical stability, delta T should be uh, uh, less than or equal to delta X over to the square root of 2G and H uh, max, where the delta T and delta X are temporal and spatial grid length of grid sizes and the G is the gravi gravity acceleration with a value of 9.8 meter per uh, square second and the H max is the maximum still water depth. Then for the selection of the, for the methods and procedures, uh, we selected the, the earthquake source parameters for tsunami simulation from the study uh, of Salcedo in 2010. Salcedo is also my colleague in, in, in the Philippines, the Chiribu Volcano in the Philippines. So, aside from that, we use uh, I use the numerical tsunami simulation using the tsunami N2. Tsunami N2 uh, stands for the Tohoku University Numerical Analysis Model for Investigation of Near Field Tsunamis, and with the result of the uh, uh, numer numerical uh, uh, simulations, uh, I analyzed the effectiveness of the existing tsunami sensor and the proposed tsunami sensor project in the area. So for the bathymetry and topography data, uh, from the topography and bathymetry data that uh, is available in the Philippines, I digitized the bathymetry points and merged it with the GEBCO 30 arc second, uh, which has uh, this uh, uh, result. GEBCO stands for the general bathymetry uh, of the ocean, which is available in the website. So for the bathymetry data for tsunami arrival times and tsunami heights calculations, uh, I used uh, three bathymetry data, where, uh, one of which is the GEBCO 1 arc minute, and the other one is the GEBCO 30 arc second plus the digitized bathymetry, and the, and then, and the digitized bathymetry. So uh, as a comparison, the uh, GEBCO 30 arc second and digitized bathymetry has um, final resolution in terms of bathymetry contour as uh, 
uh, compared to the GEBCO1 arc minute bathymetry. Then for the bathymetry and topography data for tsunami inundations, I use the GEBCO30 arc second plus the digitized bathymetry and merge it with the uh, SRTM uh, version one data or the shuttle radar topography mission version two uh, with this uh, region. Then for the scenario earthquakes, uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the study of the of Salcedo in 2010, uh, I used uh, two cases. With the first case is the historical earthquakes. Historical means this already happened. So this event was happened um, in, 90, in 1964. So uh, the initial condition of the earthquake is uh, 7.6 magnitude with this, uh, with this location, with the fault length of 97.52 kilometers, the fault width is 53.21 kilometers with a depth of uh, zero and a slip amount of 1.23 and the maximum uplift is uh, 64 centimeters represented by these uh, blue contour lines and the maximum subsidence is 26 centimeters represented by these uh, 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 red con contour lines. And for the maximum credible uh, K, uh, uh, event, which I, I, I use as case two, the initial uh, condition has a magnitude of 8.4 with the same location as the, uh, as the case one with the fault length of 254 kilometers and with the fault width of 91.10 with the slip amount of 3.69 and a depth of zero. The maximum uplift of this uh, case is 1.83 meter represented by the Re, uh, blue contour lines and the maximum subsidence is 31 centimeters represented by the red contour lines. And for the computer, computer, computational settings, so this is the, uh, so this is my computational settings taken at this re, uh, in this region. So uh, for the tsunami height and tsunami travel time, the computational dimension is uh, derived from this region, 11, uh, 14 to 20 uh, degrees north and 116.5 uh, to 125 degrees east. The computational, ta computational time is for uh, four hours and uh, these are the other parameters. And for, for, uh, for the different uh, bathymetry uh, uh, bathymetry data that I used, uh, they have almost uh, the same maximum height. Uh, so this is the computational setting. Uh, the computation, computational setting is derived from this uh, region. So for tsunami inundation computation of the four regions. Uh, sorry, sorry. So, as I, uh, as I showed in the earlier slide, uh, the computational dimension is derived from this region. The computational time for this uh, tsunami inundation computation is four hours and temporal grid of one second for delta T. Then for the other parameters uh, are, are, are here. And it, uh, I use the topographic data from the shuttle radar topographic mission and the bathymetry data with GEBCO 30 arc second uh, plus the digitized points. So this is the computational setting for the tsunami inundation. So the computational inundation of these regions, uh, these small regions, receives the water fluxes from the large region and the small regions uh, uh, or the large region receives the average water level from the small regions. So for the results and conclusions, so using the two different bathymetric data, GEBCO1 arc minute and GEBCO arc second for the case two earthquake scenarios, the, uh, they have uh, uh, differences in the uh, waveforms that were produced in the simulation. So this is the GEBCO, the, the red waveforms represent the GEBCO arc, one arc minute and the 30 and the blue waveforms uh, represents the GEBCO 30 arc second. 
So there are a lot of differences in the wave waveforms uh, computed for case one and case two earthquake scenarios. And for the uh, dip, uh, difference between the uh, Geb Cotarty arc second and the Geb Cotarty arc second plus the digital test bathymetry, for the case one and case two earthquake scenarios, uh, there are negligible differences of the two. Uh, are, uh, of the two waveforms uh, wave produced for the case one and case two earthquake scenarios. So for the tsunami arrival times, um, I, I made an emphasis of this uh, area, which I call the inner bay. So for, uh, for case one earthquake scenario, the tsunami arrives 38 minutes in the inner bay recorded at uh, tide gauge station two after the earthquake. And for the, eight, uh, for the case to earthquake scenario, the, the tsunami arrived in the inner bay, also recorded at the uh, tide gates, uh, station number two in 35 minutes after the earthquake. And for the tsunami maximum heights, the maximum heights recorded in the inner bay for the case one earthquake scenario is 0.3 meters recorded at the tide gate station three. And for the case two earthquake scenario recorded by the tide gates station number four with the height of 1.6 meters. And for the maximum tsunami heights for case eight, for earthquake, uh, for case one scenario, the maximum tsunami height is 0.7 meters while the maximum tsunami height recorded at tide, uh, or in, in case to earthquake scenarios, 2.8 meters. And for the inundation uh, computation, I set this area, I set this area as target area for inundation computation. So for the case one earthquake scenario, the maximum height recorded in the station is 0.7 meters. And the inundation area with this small area, a small region here is 0.13 square kilometers. And for the case to earthquake scenario, the maximum height recorded in the station is 3.0 meter, and the inundation area in this small region is 0.7 kilometer square. And for the uh, vertical only effect and horizontal effect as initial condition, uh, I also set these water gauges one, two, and three uh, to compete for the differences of the effects of the uh, two phenomena, the vertical effect only and the vertical and horizontal effect. So water gauge, uh, the, the blue waveform represents the vertical plus horizontal effects. And for the red uh, uh, waveforms uh, represent the vertical effects only. And water gauge recorded the biggest difference at 17%. Of the, the, of, the two mina, of the two phenomena, the vertical horizontal effects and the vertical effects only. So uh, we can see here that there is a difference of 17%. So for the tsunami sensor, the tsunami sensor is effective as a warning system at the inner bay because uh, in case one earthquake scenario, the, the tsunami will reach in this area 44 minutes after the after the detection of an uh, of tsunami in, in this water uh, in this uh, tsunami sensor in four keys to earthquake scenario it's 45 minutes and it's not effective as tsunami sensor in this area because for case to earthquake scenario the tsunami will reach the shore uh, less than one minute after the earthquake so for this the uh, tsunami sensor which is a proposed tsunami sensor in this area, the tsunami will arrive 15 minutes after the earthquake in case one earthquake scenario, and the tsunami arrives 11 minutes after the earthquake in case two earthquake scenario. So this tsunami sensor will uh, detect the tsunami earlier for case one earth, uh, than this uh, the, in this area. Uh, for case one earthquake scenario is 36 minutes and for case two earthquake scenario is 37 minutes. So for the conclusion, so there will be a minimal uh, tsunami effect of the case one 
Earthquake and scenario and the Lingayan Gulf Coast and anticipation of 1.6 tsunami height for case two earthquake scenario and the inner bay should be planned for. And no enormous tsunami inundation will happen in the case two earthquake scenario in the Gupan City, assuming that the SRTM data are accurate, topography verification of target area is also recommended. And considering the horizontal effect and tsunami soil migration is important in order to anticipate the wave height difference when it is neglected. Then for the existing tsunami sensor, uh, it can be effective as a uh, warning uh, system, the inner bay, because there is a lead time of at least 45 minutes for case to earthquake scenario. For the people to evacuate, for the tsunami uh, will be uh, detected while well, it's ineffective and will in the coast, the, in the, the outer, uh, outer coast, because there is a sudden tsunami arrival. For case one earthquake scenario, it's eight minutes. For case to earthquake scenario, it's less than one minute. And the Diaka, uh, tide gate station, which is a proposed uh, Tsunami sensor to be funded by, by JICA detects the tsunamis earlier than the tide gate station set in the inner bay. So combining the ASTI, the existing one of the JICA, the proposed one, tide gauges as tsunami sensor will advance a better and more robust early warning system in the Lingay and Gulf. So thank you very much. Thank you, Giuliano. We have time for questions. Yes, yes, please. Professor, yeah. yeah. I think uh, your prediction will be highly depend on the size you used, and uh, also depend highly on the boundary condition you used. So my mm -hmm. question is, did you conduct grid conversion test? Did you conduct uh, your simulation accuracy will highly depend on the, the grid size you used? Yeah. So did you conduct precise conversion test? In, in other words, did they use uh, one grid size and then keep reducing the grid size until you get the same solution? Did they do that? Yeah, grid size. Because if you don't do the grid size conversion test, the prediction is unreliable. But that's not what I mean. What I mean is that uh, you make a, say your grid size say is uh, one kilometer by one kilometer, then you reduce to 500 meter by 100 meter, 500. Keep reducing the size until you get the same solution. That's called a con grid conversion test. Um, so Vivian, can you translate? <laughs> from okay. I, and yes, no, no. second question is, uh, do you, do, you, you, you want to predict the inundation area? You assume that you, you let the, the tsunami move inland or not? Yes. You, you, in other words, do we use a moving boundary condition or use a fixed boundary condition? Is it moving or fixed condition? Yeah. Are you using moving boundary condition or fixed boundary yeah. condition? It's a fixed boundary. Yeah, because uh, in reality it's moving, because tsunami is moving in and that's where you have the inundation. Yeah. So you just project your tide high into the area. Yeah. So the inundation area is the projection of your tsunami high. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, if there are no other questions, I have one question. When tsunami hits the coast and they start spreading around the dry land, what method do you use to predict this kind of flooding, tsunami caused coastal flooding? Are you, do you have some, any special method or not? Not, not much. Uh, that is the second, I mean, my, my, my study goes on the uh, study. I mean, this is the way forward of my study. So I just check the height. I just check the height and the arrival times. So okay. As uh, as as 
Well, that is the way forward when study. So after this, I have to check the inundation and how how fast the the water goes through this. Okay. This uh, land. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? If not, then we can ask the next speaker, Shadung Moja.